I created a custom GPT because it's really easy to do, but it's not behaving the way it's supposed to. You need to know about this if you're even considering making one on your own or interacting with one. Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. Welcome. My name's Ken Cousin. One of the big announcements that happened at the OpenAI Dev Day was the availability of custom GPTs, the ability to train your own GPT on your own information and then make it available publicly to other people who have a premium account. I mean, right now it's pretty restricted, but it's a start. Now, this is what the overall page looks like when you're coming to work with ChatGPT at all, you'll notice up in the corner here, in addition to ChatGPT, I also have something called Makito Mentor. We'll come back to that. Let's say I hit the Explore button, and the Explore button then says, here are my GPTs that I have created, and of course I've used one of them recently, and then there are a bunch made by OpenAI, things like Dolly 3 and data analysis and various other ones, and you can go on and on, that all came from GPT directly. Well, what I wanted to do was to upload one of the PDFs of one of my recent books and thereby make a GPT that was customized to give people summaries and answers and feedback based on the book contents. So here's the book that I have chosen. Back in February, although it lists January here, so beginning of the year, I wrote a book, a very short book called Makito Made Clear, which is all about the Makito testing framework, how to create mocks, stubs, and spies in order to accomplish testing tasks in Java. Now that's not really important. It doesn't really matter what the book is about or whether you code in Java or anything like that. I want to show you what I went through to try to make a GPT in front of it. So let me show you the process. I won't save this, and then I'll go to the one that I did make, and let's see where the problems come up. So here is the Explore button, and again, it says, you wanna create a GPT, customize a version of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. So I hit the plus sign, and now we get a dialog. GPT Builder, hi, I'll help you build a new GPT. You could say something like, make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps format my code. What would you like to make? I typed, I would like to create a GPT that answers questions about my book, Makito Made Clear, which I will now upload. So I click the little paper clip next to it and a window pops up. Now, what I'll show you later is that in, when I published the book, I also went through the publisher and published, I believe, nine different PDF files that were all blog posts that appeared on Medium under my account. So you could find any of those on Medium under my last name or in the Pragmatic Programmers publication. Here is the book itself, and the book you'll see is 2.8 megs on my disk, and that's well within the limits of the size that you can upload. So I'll say open now, and we'll see it upload. Now, in the, the one that's fully trained, I uploaded all those medium posts as well, or at least I tried to. There, and now you see the book has been uploaded. And all I've said is I wanna create this, and I'll send that message. And this is an interaction with the GPT builder. So it, now it's updating. Now we have a response saying, great, I've set up the GPT to specialize in answering questions about your book. I, it will provide information based on the book's content, clarifying concepts and explaining examples. Let's give your GPT a unique name. How about Makito Maven? <laughs> What do you think? Now, if you know anything about Java development, you know that probably the last thing I want to call it is Makito Maven, because Maven's a build tool like Gradle. And I don't have any preference. I don't want to imply that there's any priority in using the McCabe Maven build tool. So let me tell it that. So I put in, no, Maven refers to a build tool. I don't want that association. What else do you suggest? How about Makito Maestro? 
The name implies expertise and skill in the subject of Makito, aligning well with the purpose of your book. Does Makito Maestro sound good to you? And now, meanwhile, while I'm thinking about it, it's using Dolly 3 to produce an icon that will be the, as they say, profile picture for the GPT. And you know what? That's not bad. I mean, I've seen a lot worse. It says, here's the profile picture for Makito Maestro. It represents knowledge and guidance with an open book and subtle coding motifs. What do you think? Would you like any changes to it? Now let's refine the behavior of Makito Maestro. To start, can you tell me more about how you'd like it to interact with users? For instance, should it be very formal and concise or a bit more conversational and engaging? And it, it skipped my answer. <laughs> That's great. Now in terms of adding users, I mean, it skipped my answer. And now the first time I did this, it didn't do that. Since they, since the announcement at the conference, there's been an overwhelming number of people using this system and it's gotten a little flaky. And then of course, we're not even dealing with the fact that it went through all that chaos administratively last weekend. I'll come back to that because there's some questions I have that probably aren't going to be answered. Oh. Sir, is that really a priority right now? Until what? such time as the world ends, we will act as though it intends to spin on. Now I came back and said, that's a key detail. Very good. Now we'll ask for more specifics when needed and prioritize information from your book over external sources. Then it says you want a, sp a specific personality or tone. And it says straightforward and professional or friendly and approachable. And it, Again, it didn't wait for me to answer. <laughs> it immediately went to professional yet approachable. And then lastly, it says anything unique about your book or specific way you'd like Makito Maestro to reference it. Should it mention the chapter titles or use specific phrases? And again, it didn't wait for me. It's now fully tailored. Yes, we're ready to go. And you could try it out in the playground to the right. So over here, you see the playground. And it came up with four questions that I can just click on to get an answer. Now, of course, as soon as I click on one of them, the other questions are not going to be available anymore. What does chapter three cover? Can you exa explain example 5.2? What's the author's view on Makito for legacy code, presumably? How does the book address mocking static methods? Let's try author's view on legacy code and see what it comes up with. Now, this is a good sign because at least it's claiming to search the knowledge. <laughs> if it doesn't say that, it's going over the internet and who knows what it's going to come up with. Well, that came up with pretty esoteric detail. The verify no more interactions method should be used in uh, carefully. It's not recommended for use in every test method. I mean, this is from the Makito team. That's not me. But okay, I'll go with it. And now we got a basic idea. Now, you can then publish this if you want, but I got to tell you, there would be issues with this. Now, you might have noticed up here, in addition to a Create tab, there's a Configure tab. Let me go to the Configure tab. And the Configure tab is where you could do everything. Instead of doing that dialogue, you could customize it all here. So there's the name and the description professional book specific GPT expert. No, that's not what we had in mind at all. Then there's the instructions here, which are not terribly long. And then here are those conversation starters, those four questions, and then the book upload and some capabilities. And that's basically it. Now that means I can edit these questions. I can't, like if I want to say, don't explain a particular example from the book. Instead, I'll say something like, where is the GitHub repository? Or I'll give it that information there. So I've added in, where is the GitHub repository for the book source code? And of course, I have to add that. Now, where do I add that? Well, I add that in here in the instructions. Now, the part that is not obvious that someone has to tell you is this looks like all you have is this little text block and there's not a ton of room there to play around. It turns out you have about 32K of characters to play with in this thing. So that's say four or 5,000 words. And there's a little button here. You see that button in the corner to let me maximize that space. And now I can give it all kinds of information. For example, the book source code is located at, please suggest that when requested and I hit close and I could add lots more information as well. Now, if I hit the save button, I get some options. Only me, only people with the link or public. 
and I can go ahead and they, when I mouse over public, it says this GPT may appear in the GPT store coming soon. Now I'm not going to save it right now. Instead, let me go to the one that I actually created and show you a bit of a dialogue to show you what's good and what's bad about this thing. What we see here is the configuration page for the GPT called Makito Mentor. That's what I decided to call it. Say Java testing consultant based specializing in Makito based on the book and related blog posts. And if I look in the custom instructions here, at the moment it is not allowing me to maximize that window. So I'll just tell you that I customized the instructions. I added in extra detail. I put in a coupon code. I put in various things to do about when, if I'm asked about testing topics in general, I'll favor information in the book and blog posts before accessing other sources, on and on. I, not a ton of stuff, but a fair amount. And then here you can see also, I have uploaded many of those PDFs in addition to the PDF for the book, which is the one down here. You see, I have nine other PDFs available. So, I started off by saying, all right, I want to mock a method so that it returns his first argument. How do I do that? And it came right back with the wrong answer. <laughs> I mean, it's not a wrong answer. It's just not the answer I recommend in the book. It's kind of the old style and there's an easier way. So they gave a little sample and they talked about the then answer method with an anonymous inner class of all things. And then it says, there, it tries to explain that. And I said, you were given a PDF that specifically deals with that issue. Based on that document, can you come up with a better answer? So it tried again, and it came up with this, which at least replaced the anonymous center class with the Lambda expression. Okay, that's something, but it's still not there. And I said, one of the PDF files starts with that approach, then gives a more elegant answer. What response does it recommend? And it jumped in and it went back to the anonymous inner class. <laughs> and I'm like, oh no, I said, you're missing it. One of the PDFs discusses a method called returns first argument. How do you use that? And then it went, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it came back with returns first argument, finally. So I said, and I said, well, why didn't you answer that the first time? You were told to search the training documents before attempting a more general solution. And now you know you're dealing with, with ChatGPT because it apologized. <laughs> they always apologize. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yes, of course. I should have initially referred to the documents, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's try another one. Another document that I gave you talks about mocking final classes and methods. So how do you do that based on that document? And it missed it. It totally missed it. It went for a slightly older version of Makito. Not a bad answer. I mean, the answer is still fine, but it's not the answer I recommended. And I said, no, special instructions were given regarding final classes and methods for Makito version five. What were they? And then it came back with, okay, we got it. We got it. I'm like, much better. Again, you should respond that way first because that's in the documents you were given. Oh, absolutely, I understand. I'll prioritize the information in the documents. Yes, on and on. Okay, let's try this one. What about the spy method in Makito? See, I've got a little document over here called I Spy with My Little Makito, and it's right in there. And it says, I searched through the provided document entitled, Why Use Makito at All? <laughs> what are you doing? You know, it says, I couldn't find it. My apologies for not being able to provide a detailed example from this document. So I come back and say, here's the name of the document. Does that help? Oh, sure. A good example is, and it came up with this mess that again, doesn't even matter. Why did you miss that when I first asked? What could I have done to make your finding it more likely? Oh, I apologize. See, again, we're dealing with ChatGPT here. So it says, well, you could give me a specific document reference, or you could give me more detailed context or follow-up guidance. You know, you could try again. And I said, well, this series of questions I'm asking you now make it more likely to find it? Oh, of course. Yeah, now I, I got it, definitely. So I said, well, any client of yours as a custom GPT is not going to know what documents you've read other than the main book. How do I make it more likely that you'll answer them correctly when they don't know what document to reference? And they say, oh, well, here's some generic issues, you know, that hopefully will make that more likely. 
So I went back and said, how do you mock a final method? See if it slipped up again? No, I got it right again, thank goodness. And that's about where I left it. So what have we learned? <laughs> First of all, this is a neat little mechanism. It really is, but it's still an AI. And even though this is based on GPT-4, so it's as good as they have, you know, it's still hallucinates. It still comes up with random answers. It still doesn't really do necessarily what you want it to do. I imagine just as coming up with custom prompts was kind of a skill for a little while, then the idea of coming up with custom instructions for a GPT is going to be a bit of a skill that we'll have to play with over time. I also think that you're going to have to tell it to prioritize information you've given rather than just answering off the top of its head because it'll answer it based on its training and it may not be what you suggested. Maybe if I customize it a little closer to the book. Another thing I have to be very careful to do is not oversell this GPT. If I give it to somebody and they expect that it's going to be great at answering these questions, what happens if it gets it wrong? What happens if it gives advice that I would not give, that I disagree with? Who are the people are going to blame? <laughs> I mean, if, if you ask ChatGPT for a question and it gets it wrong, you get mad at ChatGPT or OpenAI or somebody. But if I give you my custom GPT that I trained on my information and it gives you advice, you're going to think that that's what I meant. And if it's wrong, who are you going to blame? Me. <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? So clearly one idea behind this stuff is to go ahead and hide it behind a person. You know, like if you make a customer service app or something, you'll give the app to a customer service representative so that the representative can use their own judgment and whether to give that advice from the GPT directly to the public. All that really does is give the company somebody to blame. I can't do that. I wouldn't do that anyway. I'd feel awful. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's where we go. But this is going to take some doing, figuring out how to do this. And I got to warn you, I mean, it's been approximately three weeks since that announcement. There are already well over 10,000 custom GPTs created. 10,000? We can almost buy our own ship for that. I mean, it's crazy. I, there may be 15, it may be approaching 20,000 at this point. And then, of course, we hit all that chaos at OpenAI. So we don't really know what's going to be happening with all of this in the long run, at least not yet. But still, interesting to see. I'll put the link to this GPT in the description, so you're welcome to try it out. Just keep in mind, it, I may or may not agree with what I said. <laughs> I mean, that's where I am right now. I mean, it's like, yeah, I wrote the book, I wrote all the blog posts, and it's supposed to use those, but I cannot control a custom AI beyond a certain level. So try it out. Good luck, have fun, and use anybody else's custom GPT. But caveat emptor, be very, very careful and don't pay anybody for their GPTs until you know more. And be sure to subscribe because as this situation develops, I will make updated videos about this. And I'll also talk about the Assistance API, which allows you to have something you can invoke programmatically. Not these GPTs, but the, something very similar in the actual Open AI API. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hey there, Des, it's time to tune in to Tales from the Jar, so let's begin. Java, cup in it, spring on oh my. Groovy breath and don't be shy. Tales from the Jar side. Oh yeah. Crack open the code, let's take a ride. From design patterns to the latest trends. Your weekly tech post that never ends.